Hello, my friends, and welcome back to tonight's Digital Fireside. My name is Mark Williams. I'm your host, and it's so good to be back with you for this wonderful fun, this wonderful Sunday fun day fireside as we get ready for general conference. I'll introduce our speakers in just a few minutes, but in case you haven't yet, go to turtle.link slash app and download the Our Turtle House app. It's totally free and a wonderful resource for you and your family to help you come closer together and closer to Christ. It's and so much fun and inspirational content in there from some of your favorite Latter-day Saint speakers like John, by the way, Hank Smith, Meg Johnson, Gainalyn Condi, and myself, Carmen Herbert, and so many more. So go check that out at turtle.link slash app. And make sure that you leave your feedback for us on these firesides. We want to make sure that the content that we share, the people that that uh, come on the firesides, the topics that we talk about are relevant for the situations that you're going through, the questions that you have, and everything. So leave that feedback for us at turtle.link slash share. And we'll do our best to get those speakers on and address those topics that you want to hear about. So thank you so much for all of you who have left your feedback for us. We're doing our best to get, get those on the schedule. So thank you so much. With that... It is, we are just one week out, less than a week now, uh, out from General Conference. And that's, it's, some people call it the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl of, uh, of our church. But what can we do to make sure that we get the most out of it so that it's not just us showing up and listening to some songs and some inspirational talks, but that, but that we feel edified and uplifted as a result of the messages that we hear from the leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Our speakers tonight are going to share their perspective and testimonies with us, so let's go ahead and introduce them, shall we? Our first speaker was born and raised in West Jordan, Utah. He's the fourth of six children. He served in the Uruguay Montevideo West Mission and graduated with a bachelor's in history from Utah State University, where he met his wife, Ashley. Together, they have four amazing children. He later received a master's in education from the University of Utah and has been teaching seminary for ten for uh, more than 10 years now, I believe, and just recently got a puppy named Padme. And uh, a fun little fact that about him is that he says that he cares way too much about the Utah Jazz. <laughs> Let's welcome our first speaker, Andy Shepard. Andy, so good to have you back, my friend. Mark, great to see you. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. And uh, is that Padme like uh, like Star Wars Padme, or is yeah, that... it is. So it's a it's a little golden doodle. And oh, so cute. my sister actually had a whole litter of puppies, and she named them all for Star Wars names. And so, like, just for because when they have puppies, sometimes they name them red, blue, purple, or whatever. She right, gave them all yeah. a Star Wars name. And when we took the puppy, my kids were very adamant that that, and I was good with it, but that that name would not change. Padme was the name. So <laughs> it's a cool name. It's a cool name, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. So I love that. Yeah, I know we like it. Well, awesome, Andy. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We'll introduce our other speaker for the evening who's no stranger to these firesides. She's a popular motivational speaker known for inspiring others with her unique honesty, authenticity, and spirit, and is dedicated to her family faith and inspiring others. She loves teaching others with speaking and writing and has experienced healing from a major chronic illness as the mother to two miracle children. And after the heartbreaking suicide of her 40 year old sister, she's constantly working towards prevention. She lives with an open heart and feels passionate about sharing principles that will empower others to live life with more joy. And as a regular television and radio guest, she hosts the popular shows Real Talk CFM and The Middle. And her talks and books have now encouraged thousands of people all over the world. She loves growing older with her husband, Rob, and aims to keep learning and loving. And her now 10th book, which is amazing, will come out this Christmas. So let's welcome our dear friend, Ganelin Condi. Ganelin, so good to have you back, my friend. It's so good to be here. And I love this time of year. Fall is my favorite and right before conference. And I'm excited to get to know Andy. It's like a new friend day for me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and thank you for coming back so quickly. You were just with us a couple of weeks ago. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And I and I love that you guys invite me and I can talk about a lots of different things because that's how I roll. I exactly. always talk about lots of different lots things. Lots of different things. I love it. I yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, let's get things started off with an opening prayer by Gaina Lynn, and then we'll dive in with our first speaker. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this time of year, for preparation, for general conference, for the opportunity to take our questions and concerns to Thee and to learn and be inspired by our general leadership. We ask Heavenly Father, as we share messages of faith tonight, that we will be instruments in answering prayer and that the Spirit will be with us, that the technology will work well, and that we will continue to help build Zion together as brothers and sisters as we prepare for the Savior to come. And we say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Gendelin. Okay, Andy, I I uh, I know that that. Well, I was wondering with the Padme name was based on on Star Wars because I know how much you are a fan of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and and other things, and so I was I was curious, and so I'm glad yeah, no, to know it, that uh, it definitely was. We went over and we met Padme when she was just one week old, and she was actually the first one I picked up that I wow. looked through all seven of them, and I was like this one, and I held her, and then convinced my wife. Mostly, I think like she's, <laughs> we're at the point where she like, she's accepted. She loves, she loves our dog, but she's also kind of like, we chose to do this. And she, <laughs> she reminds me about that sometimes because puppies are a lot of work. They're a lot, they're, they're, true. they're not quite human baby level work, but they are a lot of work. And so it's very, very true. But our yeah. kids love her and she's a blessing to our home. So we're very right so about Padme joining us. I love it. I love it. Well, so excited to have you here with us on the fireside as we talk about how to get the most that we can out of general conference and prepare and, and ultimately prepare to hear the messages that will come in just a few days. So go ahead and take it away, my friend. All right. Thank you, Mark. Well, and I was really excited when you shared with me that that's what you'd like me to, to join us and talk about. Cause I, I, I've always been at the, I, Gainalyn was talking about, or maybe it was you who was mentioned Super Bowl for the church. For me, I just general conference is, is, is like Christmas every six months. And I've, come to live my life and really come to appreciate that every six months or so I really get spiritually uplifted and we all have our ups and downs in life. Um, but for me, conference always just seems to be one of those ups that as a general conference hits, then I like, I always leave a general conference so motivated and I'm like, you know what, like I'm never going to sin again. I'm going to be so good. And I have all these thoughts and impressions. And I love that about conference. And obviously I'm not perfect and I fail to live up to every ideal that I set for myself, every general conference, but I've always been comforted by the teachings of uh, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland when he taught. And it's a great talk from a conference. People should go back and review. He says, be therefore perfect eventually. And he reminds us of that truth that the word perfect in the New Testament, as it is translated in the Sermon on the Mount, when the Savior says, be therefore perfect, the word perfect from the Greek translation can also be interpreted as complete, finished, or fully developed. And that's only going to take us forever. And I, I also think it's worth noting that Jesus didn't include himself there in Matthew 5 when he says, be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven. But then among the Nephites in 3rd Nephi 12, he says, be therefore perfect, even as I or your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And I, I've always loved and appreciated that teaching, knowing that it's going to take us a long time to, to become the way our heavenly parents are, to become like our Savior, Jesus Christ. But that the Lord, I know, is patient with us in our progress. But I do love the general conference gives me direction and motivation. And so that's kind of what I, I want to talk about. I actually want to start by sharing with you a picture. And it's just a little target over here. It's something I often share with my seminary students. And at the center of this target, you'll notice the word doctrine. And then the next ring is principles. And then the last ring I have is, is, is application. And so I always tell my students as a seminary teacher that we're really here to teach the doctrine and that I want to focus this in on the doctrine. Every good target game I know about, you get the most points when you hit the word doctrine. Um, and the reason I, I tell them that it comes from several quotes from prophets. I, I love, of course, Boyd K. Packer when he taught us that true doctrine understood changes our attitudes and behavior and that a study of the doctrine of the gospel can improve our behavior better than a study of behavior can improve our behavior which is a fancy way of just simply saying that when we truly know a doctrine, for example, a doctrine like God is our father, and that's a doctrine, it's a true eternal truth, that it'll change us, that when the spirit testifies us uh, to us of that truth, it, it changes us and it changes our lives uh, much better than any kind of study of application could. So the furthest out ring is the application. And I always tell the students it's the widest ring because when a doctrine is understood, the application can vary. So one family can hear the doctrine that remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But then that application might be a little bit different from one family to the other. I know in my home when I was growing up, my mom always said, you got to keep your Sunday clothes on for the whole day. And I had other friends' homes who didn't do that. And I would wonder, I was like, well, whose family is more righteous or whose family is doing the right thing? And I came to learn that it's both, that those each family's, my mother was right for our family and for our situation and what she believed she needed to teach us. That was a good personal application for the shepherd home. And my friends' families for the white home, it was a good personal application how they how they did it. But the most important part was that they were trying, each of us in our own homes, to make the Sabbath day a holy thing. Um, I share that to start just with the point of this. The brethren and the, the men and the women who will speak at General Conference coming up here, uh, they're going to teach us doctrine. 
but they're teaching a global world of millions of people and their hope, just as it is my hope when I teach in a seminary, I tell my seminary students, I'm going to teach doctrine every day. And when we teach that doctrine, I hope 30 different applications walk out the door. If we had a good discussion that our body is a temple and that you felt the spirit and it testified to that doctrine, well, one of you might leave and your application is going to be, I need to maybe dress more modestly. And another person is going to leave and say, you know, I need to be nicer when I look in the mirror and be nicer about myself and this gift of mine. And one of you is going to leave and say, I need to quit vaping. And you're all right, right? There's all those applications that can come. I hope millions of applications and impressions come at General Conference. And so they're going to teach doctrine. And then we hope millions of different applications come. And I start with that because I feel like sometimes when we talk General Conference preparation, um, I want us to be careful that we don't say there's like the way to prepare for General Conference. If you do it just like this, then now you're ready for General Conference. And well, because the way we get ready for general conference is a personal application. The principle or the doctrine is what I'd like to share. So here is my principle of the day and what I'd like to share for just the brief few minutes I'm with us. Uh, my eternal truth, if you will, of our day is this. It is that the Lord is speaking to us and that the teachings of general conference provide a wonderful opportunity for us to hear him. I believe that the Lord speaks to us and he speaks to us probably more than we sometimes give him credit for. Um, General Conference is just one such opportunity. It gives us a great opportunity to hear him. But he's always trying to speak to us and often is communicating to us. In February 2020, if you ever want to go back and review, um, Elder Bednar gave a, a, a little, they call it an evening with a general authority when they train seminary teachers, but it's in the gospel library. You're all free to watch it. And it was one of my favorite trainings ever because he talked about how he worries that sometimes we over formulatize this personal revelation. And so I'm going to share with you a quote. I had to transcribe it myself because it's only... It's a Q&A session he did with seminary teachers, but here's what he said. He said, we often make it hard on ourselves to receive personal revelation. By that, I mean the covenant promise is that as we honor our covenants, we may always have the Holy Ghost to be our constant companion. But we talk about it and we treat it as if hearing the voice of the Lord through his spirit is the rare event. And that just strikes me as a little curious. He goes on to say, everywhere we go, we get checklists and formulas that say, if you do these four things, then the Holy Ghost is going to speak to you. And I go, wait a minute. We should be trying so much to recognize when it comes, we should be trying to recognize what causes it to leave because it ought to be with us all the time. And then he goes on to say, and, um, and we don't need to leave that quote. He says, he goes on to say, it's not every nanosecond. He says, don't be extremists on me, but I want us to learn, Elder Bednar taught that evening, that we're living in the revelation, that the Lord speaks to us constantly. And he gave two examples. He gave Oliver Cowdery. And, and in Doctrine and Covenant 6, there's a verse around verse 15. It talks about how Oliver Cowdery was inspired to move to Palmyra. And the Lord says, were it not so, you would not have moved here at this time. But Oliver Cowdery didn't know it in the moment. It's not like he had this, well, the Lord just told me to move to Palmyra and I'm doing it. But he was just going and doing the best he could. And the Lord was inspiring him. He gives an example of Nephi, who in 1 Nephi chapter 4, verse 6 says that I went beforehand not knowing what things I should do. Elder Bednar says in the common vernacular, Nephi is basically saying, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was just doing the best I could. I'm doing what I knew I was supposed to be doing. And then looking back, Nephi writes, I went beforehand with the spirit that he knew the Lord was with him. The spirit was with him. So that's a that's a long way of just saying, I believe we're better at feeling the spirit than we give ourselves credit for. Um, the Lord already is speaking to you. General Conference provides just a great opportunity. And I want to be careful in using Elder Bednar's caution to not give you a formula of like, well, if you do this and if you do these three things, then this is how you make a great General Conference weekend. I really believe something that Elder Holland said, and I want to make that just our principle. And then I'm going to just share a story. And that's that's my whole thought of the day, which is just this. Elder Holland once said in, in General Conference, he, he talked about how they speak on a lot of topics. And he says, we know that not everyone is viewing pornography or shirking marriage or having illicit relationships. And he says, but we're under a solemn charge to issue warning calls to those who are wherever they may be in this world. And then he gives this great counsel. He says, so when we speak on that subject, listen for another that addresses an area where you may be lacking. And then here's his quote. That's a really famous one that's in a lot of the church videos. He says, if we teach by the spirit and you listen by the spirit, some one of us will touch on your circumstance, sending a personal little prophetic epistle just to you. I'm going to say that one more time. Elder Holland has taught us, he says, if we teach by the Spirit, well, they will, and we listen by the Spirit, some one of us will touch on your circumstance, sending a personal little prophetic epistle just to you. 
I believe in that promise. And I think then the only question that remains for us, if that's our principles, that the Lord's giving us an opportunity through general conference to hear his voice through the Holy Ghost, is for us to figure out what does that mean for us to listen by the Spirit? And I think that can look different from person to person. But I'll, I'll share a few examples from my own life. Um, and we can give some application, but that application is simply that. These are just ideas. There is no one way. And so what I hope and invite each of you who are listening to this to, to think about is just what does that mean for you to listen by the Spirit? What are you going to do? Um, but I don't want to give you a formula. And I hope that you don't feel like there's the formula that if I have a question and I ask it and I say a prayer before, then then it just has to happen just like this. Elder Bednar teaches us, no, the Spirit's speaking to us often and commonly, but general conference is a great chance to hear him and, and, and have some impressions. So several years ago, here's my story. Um, in October of 2012, I was a brand new seminary teacher. And my story is that I really didn't actually plan on and for sure want to be a, a seminary teacher. It was something that I kind of felt prompted to do. And so I pursued it. Um, but then by the time they were offering me the job, even I was like, I'll call you back. And I remember I was in the car and I was driving and I and I was praying out loud, like I sometimes do when I'm driving. And I says, Heavenly Father, you really want me to do this, don't you? And I felt a, a piece and, a, and an answer that I, I felt like that the Lord did. And so I said, and here's where I'm a bad example. I was like, okay, I'll give you a few years because I had all these things I wanted to do and I knew I could accomplish anything. And so I kind of bargained with God a little bit, which I don't think is, is right. And I've since repented, but I was just kind of like, I'll give you two years and then I'll go do what I want to do. Well, that very first year that I was a seminary teacher in October of 2012, general conference came around and I went into it with questions like we often do. And I had written down several questions of some doctrine and some things I wanted answered for me. And um, those questions didn't get answered, that general conference, the ones I had written down. The question that I got answered in that general conference was the question I didn't know I was asking. And so I was listening to general conference and President Henry B. Eyring spoke, and it's one of my favorite talks. It's called, Where is the Pavilion? And in his talk, Where is the Pavilion? President Eyring tells a story about being a professor at Stanford University. And so he's at Stanford and it's like Ivy League it's a really, it's a famous university. Everyone knows it. And he gets asked to go from Stanford, living in California, an ideal family situation to go to Rexburg and be the president of Rick's College. And if you just say those in juxtaposition, Stanford, Rick's College, and I'm not trying to like put down Rick's College, right? It's which is now BYU, Idaho. But just saying those in juxtaposition, Stanford, Rick's College, you, you can feel where that wouldn't have felt like a move up to him. But he felt that the Lord wanted him to. And so he prayed about it. And him and his wife prayed about it. And he made a decision, I'll go to Rick's college. And in this talk, he then even says that he felt like he had done his time. He'd given several years to Rick's college and he'd been there for, I think it was five years, he mentions. And, and he had another great job opportunity come up. And he called the president of the church to say, hey, I have this great job opportunity. And the president of the church responded, well, we'll know where to find you if you take it. But that once again, he felt that whispering of the Lord in his heart that it was the Lord's school and that the Lord wanted him at BYU, Idaho. And so he stayed. And then President Eyring says that when we do that, we remove a pavilion from our lives, that he removed a pavilion that was, you know, a pavilion, something separating us between God, like it's between me and him. He says we remove the pavilion when we say not my will, but thine be done, O Lord. And a 22 year old seminary teacher was listening to General Conference. And I did not go into that conference with the question, should I keep teaching seminary? But I came out of that conference with the answer that, yes, I should. As soon as President Eyring said that and I felt the spirit witness to me, I received a personalized prophetic epistle. Yes, this is where you're going to be. And I apologized to the Lord and I repented that night. And I said, Heavenly Father, I'll teach for as long as you want me to. I'm not giving you a two year or a five year bar. If you want me and you think you want need me in a seminary classroom, I'll do it for the rest of my life. If that's where you want me. And I felt the approbation and the love of the Lord confirm for me that that was right. And I loved it so much. And I was so excited when we came back from general conference because I was going to have my students and we we're going to talk about what did we learn in general conference? And none of my students heard that one. They all heard because it was October 2012 that the missionary age had changed and the boys were now going to get to go at the age of 18. And at first I was a little perturbed. I was kind of like, no, you guys missed it. The best talk was this one. But the thing I came to learn was, no, they heard that one because my senior boys were feeling, no, I need to start getting ready for a mission now. And that was their personalized application. And some of those boys didn't start that general conference with the question, should I go on a mission? And, and maybe some of them did. But many of them heard the spirit teach them the personalized prophetic epistle that the Lord wanted them to receive, which was that they needed to start preparing for their missions. Um, I've come to believe, and the reason I shared that Elder Bednar quote, I, I want to be careful that we don't make a formula that this is how you receive personal revelation at General Conference. I think I, I'm a very simple person, and I like to be even more simple. If we go into General Conference hoping that the Lord will teach us, then he will. And that's what I believe. 
he's speaking to us. And if we're going in and we are trying to just listen and listen by the spirit, he will teach us and we will receive personalized guidance meant for our lives, just for us. Sometimes it will be an answer to a direct question that we went into it praying about that question. And I've had that experience before. Sometimes it won't be the exact question that we went into it wanting answered. Sometimes the Lord's going to answer the question you didn't even know you had. And uh, but it is a question of your soul and it's on your on your mind and in your heart. And that's what happened for me in October of 2012. And so can I conclude with just a few thoughts, just a couple recommendations. Um, so kind of back to like my little target idea. You'll see the target up here in the top part of the screen. If the doctrine and the principle is that you and I then should listen by the spirit. Elder Holland says, if they teach by the spirit, let's give the, the men and the women who will speak this this upcoming conference credit, they will. They, they are preparing by the spirit. They haven't been assigned topics. We've, we've been told with very rare exception, they prepare all of these by the spirit that what they feel the Lord needs them to share. And then Elder Han promised us if we listen by the spirit that some one of the speakers will touch on our circumstance sending a personal little prophetic epistle just to us. And so here's my list of some applications of some things that work for me. I'm not saying these are the thing, but as I've done these applications, they're just application. That's all they are. They're my own personal application and you may have different ones, but these have helped me. And maybe you'll have a thought and you want to try some of these things. I used to always take general conference, wake up and I was like, PJ, PJ church day. Um, and that works for some people. It doesn't for me. I started learning many years ago. I take a shower, I get dressed. I put, I don't put on a shirt and tie because it's, you know, I'm not. I don't want to do that. So I put on just a t-shirt and my jeans, but I get dressed and I sit up instead of laying down because I found that I often fall asleep during general conference. I always go into that weekend with prayerful desires for guidance in my life. Um, we make muffins. My wife is so great. She makes muffins for the kids and we buy them treats because then it's an event for them and they have fun. And then I'm more able to listen because they're so excited about their treats that they're chewing on. Um, if I keep notes, something I've learned for me, I used to try to write down everything that they were saying. But we now have the gospel library. These are going to be on the gospel library in like three days after general conference. And so instead, I try to write down more what I hear, thoughts or impressions I had. And sometimes during a general conference, I'll write down an impression during a talk. I'm not sure even what the exact words were that were said, but that gave me that impression. I need to call my father more often. And I'll write that down in my in my notes, because then that gives me some action items. The Lord wanted me to learn that weekend. And that segues me to my last point. It will appear in the gospel library in just a few days. It doesn't end on Sunday afternoon. My belief about general conference is that it's an opportunity to hear the spirit. And so conference weekend's great. Um, but I have this thing and I'm going to do it to my seminary students, but I'll do it to you guys right now. I always like start to show them the gospel library that you can just push play and have the audio of conference playing again. And I'll say, guys, general conference isn't over. And I'll pretend I'm not dropping a mic. It's just beginning. Oh, and it's like this really deep thought. It's conference doesn't end when conference is over in my opinion. And so things that I do is I download the audio of the most recent general conference into my gospel library. And every Sunday morning, I listen to two talks while I'm getting ready. That's that's my application. That's my practice. Sometimes when I'm bored and I'm at, like getting an oil change, I'll put on my phone and people think I'm probably listening to like my music, but I'm actually just listening to a talk. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to listen to sports radio on my drive in the morning. And so I'll throw on a talk. Um, and as I do that, I'll have got to re-listen to every talk from general conference over the next six months, I'll have heard each of them at least three or four times. I've noticed over the last several years as I've made that my routine. And that's it. Sunday mornings, sometimes during a drive to work, and then periodically like getting an oil change. I'll make it through the entire conference three or four more times. And that's so many more impressions from the Holy Ghost where the Holy Ghost continues to teach me and give me thoughts and impressions from the, what, the weekend of general conference. And so that's one other application idea I recommend. Maybe start to download it on your phone and listen to it more often. And so in any case, I just uh, I want to conclude by just bearing my testimony. I know the Lord is speaking to us and that conference is a wonderful opportunity for us to hear him. Be careful not to, to feel like you have to be perfect right now because that's going to take us forever. But do listen for him to help us with the guidance in our lives now. And I testify that we will receive personal impressions directed just to us as we go into conference listening by the spirit. And I share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Andy, I love that. And I loved how you talked about how how so often in general conference, the things that they're sharing and even, you know, the things that, that you talked about sharing with your students and everything, you're talking in general terms. The general authorities are talking in general terms. And it's like that's that's the blessing of personal revelation that that we can take those general terms or or through the spirit. Like you mentioned, uh, like you mentioned, the thought 
where it's I need to call my dad more or that I don't I don't think that that's necessarily what they were saying over the pulpit, but that's what message you that through the spirit, that's what message you got. And I, I love that because that's, that's ultimately what it's all about. They speak in general terms and through the spirit, we learn how to apply those general terms to us personally. So thanks so much. That was fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Gainalyn, let's see. Are you muted, Gainalyn? No. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I was just pausing for you to say. Oh. <laughs> I was like, "Are we receiving revelation? What's happening?" Well, that's what I assumed you were doing. Is you were just this, sitting there. I was. I actually I was, had a. Yeah. I actually had a prompting and I wrote it down, but I was waiting for Mark to say, "Okay, now." And then he was just pausing. I'm like, "Well, maybe he's getting revelation too." <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's always, we, always. We believe in personal revelation, right? And yeah. so that's that's what we believe in all the time. And if for the doctrine point too, it's just Elder Ben and I wrote this great series of books, Act in Doctrine. That's another thing I'd recommend. I don't recommend recommend anything to come search out me. Although you should all take seminary. Everybody who's listening, get your kids in seminary. Seminary is a great resource in the world today. Um, but that that idea of, of teaching doctrine is I, I I take all of that from Elder Elder Ben. I just I just love him. And he says the doctrine answers the why questions of our lives. And that when that doctrine mm. is taught, the why comes. We know the why, and then the applications just they just flow. And so yeah, I just I love that. Well, Andy, I love what you said, and I was gonna mention this, but I'm gonna say it now, is that the way you said it is the way I the version I say of it is that general conference and church on Sunday is the one room schoolhouse and I have a teaching degree. So I, this visual makes sense. I've never taught in a one room schoolhouse where there's various grade levels. And so I think sometimes the reason, like you were saying that you took something from a talk, but your students didn't even, you know, didn't even catch it is because the Lord meets us where we're at. And so sometimes, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit in my message that when we get triggered, by someone triggers or teachers. And so sometimes I have to remind myself we're in a one room schoolhouse and everyone globally that's watching this is not necessarily having a Lehigh, Utah, 51 year old, married 31 years, grew up in California, mother of two empty nester owner, dog owner, our author experience, right? Like we're, we're, we're filtering the lens through what we have and through the spirit it can be distilled in a way that it's a personal message of Andy don't stop teaching seminary. So I really love, I really love the idea of just like showing up where we're at and knowing God is going to present a global message that then we personalize. I love that. Well, Andy, thank you so much. That was such a wonderful perspective on how we can prepare to receive revelation at general, Con at general conference. And, uh, I know you mentioned earlier on that that your your goal was not to to lay out a prescription or you know step by step type thing, and uh, I thought that that the message that you shared did a fantastic job of of teaching powerfully without you know saying do step one, do step two, step do step three. So thank well, you. I'm glad that's what you heard because that's yeah. that's definitely <laughs> what I wanted to accomplish. I know. That Elder Benner thing I was quoting from, he really worries that we over formulatize it and yeah. it causes people some ulcers. Totally. I, I can definitely appreciate that. So thank you so much for what you shared today. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, awesome. Gaynalyn. Okay. We'll go to our final speaker of the evening, Gaynalyn. So I good to have be, you here I, with I us. won't be silent when it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was like listening to the spirit. And then I was like, well, Mark's going to say something. <laughs> it's okay. That just shows all of, all of our listeners that it's very real. We keep it very real, right? Exactly. Mark? Exactly. And <laughs> revelation can come from at any time, you know, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. You you were you were getting some some answers to things and and get, you got them right at at least for me I got to write stuff down otherwise yeah, I'm gonna forget. That's what it, I was so. doing. I was like oh, I'm gonna forget it if I don't write it down. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so uh, it's always good being with you again, Lynn. I'm so excited to hear your perspective on how we can get the most out of general conference. So go ahead and take it away, my friend. Okay. Thanks, Mark. I I want to add to what Andy has already so beautifully shared, and if there's some repeat, I think that is also what happens if you look at the New Testament, right? The same stories are told from different perspectives from each of the apostles. And so uh, maybe if there's some overlap, you'll see that it's like um, the apostle version in, in the book of Luke versus um, the book of John. And um, 
it, this is just my interpretation of how after many years of attending general conference and watching general conference um, and sometimes feeling like I get a lot out of it and sometimes it's not as positive an experience, I hope I can add some more to what's already been shared. Elder Uchtdorf taught answers to your specific prayers may come directly from a particular talk or from a specific phrase. At other times, answers may come in seemingly unrelated word, phrase, or song. A heart-filled with gratitude for the blessings of life and an earnest desire to hear and follow the words of the council will prepare the way for personal revelation. And that's in his uh, talk, General Conference, No Ordinary Blessing. And I wanted to just take, as was already shared in, in this quote, maybe some aspects of what uh, Elder Uchtdorf shared and expand to that. Uh, as specifically, I want to talk about first bringing our questions to the Lord. I know for some people, God uses questions for revelation. We look not very far back to see that Joseph Smith and the unfolding opening of the restoration came because there were questions. But what I want to take on the backstory of that is Joseph Smith had a mother who had been asking those questions and she had been petitioning the Lord. I think it's interesting that all these years of her and her husband asking those questions led to her son at the age of 14 receiving answers. And so sometimes, as Andy's already talked about, we ask questions and then we wonder why the timestamp isn't closer to when we ask it when the answer shows up. But I do value bringing some questions. I I at times will, I have a journal, a study journal that I call my small plates of Gainolin and it's divided into sections and every year I start a new one. So I have a section for gratitude. I have a section for um, studying the Book of Mormon because I'm always studying the Book of Mormon and then whatever our book of study for that year might be. I have a place for talks, which is our Sunday talks and I have a general conference section. I also have a temple attendance, priesthood blessing, um, the words for my year, instead of my my resolution, I have two words for the year. So I have a place where I know personal revelation on a daily basis. And I think one of the things that's important is that questions tell the Lord that you're open for receiving revelation. Sometimes uh, because I'm a note taker and an author, I love to take copious notes during conference. Sometimes I'm active on social media during general conference as well. And certain people follow me waiting for those conference recaps. And in the last few conferences, the Lord has kind of corrected me on how to do that so that the conference becomes more personal and not so much about content that I create. But whatever version of taking questions to the Lord, taking questions to conference signals that you're coming ready. And as a speaker, when I speak to groups where there are questions on people's hearts, the spirit gets to have like a party. When I speak at events where no one really has questions, there's not that um, curiosity, then I can tell that the spirit and I have to work a little bit harder to kind of get the walls down and to get hearts open. And so as much as the speakers have prepared in coming to conference, which they are, it it's interesting when you're in an, an event or a meeting where all the participants have prepared with questions because the spirit is different in those meetings. And so I invite you, whether you're watching alone as a single or within a family or with some friends, that you bring questions. And maybe taking notes for you is cumbersome, but one of the things that I've heard shared before, especially from our church leadership, is that they take notes on promptings they receive. So they're not writing everything that a speaker is saying. They're only writing down, like I was just doing, a prompting that comes. I'm going to tell um, just a few personal anecdotes to kind of weave this first idea of bringing your questions. Um, as an author, I am at various stages of writing and publishing books. And uh, this Christmas will be number 10 for me in published books that are released. I've had a number of years where I will text my editor during conference because a book that I know is already going to print, but hasn't been put out in the stores yet, but it's already gone to the printer, but not officially released yet. Um, at times in the past, I've been triggered because <laughs> there will be books that I know are coming out that are literally ready and printed in the warehouse, ready to be shipped to the bookstores. And uh, the themes and talks that I hear in conference 
almost sound as if I've plagiarized talks, but because I know I've already written the content, it's already being published and the talks are being given in live time. There's no way for me to make any edits. In the past, I this has happened multiple times and I've panicked a little bit. Like, are people going to think in like two months when this book hits the shelf that like I plagiarized or I didn't give credit to these general leaders that have given these great talks? After that has happened so many times, um, my editor is like, it's just a signal that you're receiving the themes that God is sending to his leaders. And so maybe my point in sharing that very personal anecdote is that maybe you're not bringing questions, but maybe conference talks are actually answers. They're confirmations of previous questions that you have forgotten that you asked two, three conferences before or years before. And so my suggestion to you is as you take notes, also maybe record where you get confirmation of something that you've already done, a decision you've already made, maybe something you've already, a project you've already worked on, or something that comes as a witness after the fact that you've exercised the faith, you've asked the questions, and you kept showing up. Recording the answers as answers, I think is such a beautiful uh, way to use the theme of bringing questions. The second suggestion is what's already kind of been discussed and in Andy's message with you, and that is manning, managing our expectations. Don't try to hear and process everything. A lot comes at you at conference. And by the end of the last session, it can feel like there's no more room in the jar, so to speak, to drip any more water in that jar. And I want to share with you the thought that I've also learned a very personal pattern for me. The few weeks leading up to conference for a few years, I didn't see the pattern and I believe God works in patterns. And so I really like to see patterns in my own life. I would start to get agitated, irritated, more frustrated, more um, things didn't feel like as joyful as they had been. And it was always about a month or so, a couple weeks before conference and it took me a few conferences to realize that that was the Lord's way of helping me prepare. It was the Lord's way. If you have felt off, if you have felt irritated, if you have felt frustrated, overwhelmed, or things that used to bring you joy, worshiping in the temple, whatever it is that you can fill in the gap on that list, and it's not feeling the same, is it possible that God is trying to create in you space to receive more? So just as important as it is to not try to process everything, realize that right before conference, things may be feeling wonky. I call it my pre-conference wonkiness. <laughs> and, and that has become comforting to me because it signals to me that God is trying to create that question asking heart, but it's also a managing of expectations. When I go into conference knowing that my heart is really seeking and wanting to receive then some talks may trigger, you know, there may be speakers that trigger you. There may be talks that trigger you. That's okay. For me, triggers are teachers. It may be one of those talks is better for you to read later instead of watch or, or listen to. And I have found at times the best conference talks aren't the talks that I felt in live time, this great connection with or big answers from, but it was later in studying and reading them that I found these gems. And so whether it's a trigger or whether it's that, oh, okay, that one was okay. And it didn't feel like it was the one you wanted to tweet about or call your friend about. But later on, when you revisit it, it's a managing of the expectation. I'm a, currently serving as a Relief Society teacher in my ward. And so I have the opportunity to study and consider talks and then share and lead discussions with my ward about them later. And it's always fascinating to me which talks resonate, which talks, you know, um, the members of my ward, it feels the Lord saying to me as a teacher, this is where you need to go with this talk. And like Andy already shared, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what was said by the speaker at the time. So bring your questions to Lord. Number two, manage expectations. And now number three, music matters. In that first quote I shared with you, Elder Uchtdorf said, seemingly unrelated word, phrase, or song. I'm going to tell you some of the best 
experiences, the strongest healing experiences, the most revelation I've received has come through the music of general conference. Oftentimes that's from the tabernacle choir on temple square. Sometimes it's a choir that they've assembled just specifically for conference. But I can tell you one particular song for me that answers a lot of prayers is come now font. I happen to have a few friends that sing in the tabernacle choir. And so over the years, as the music has answered prayer, I've messaged these individuals. And in the same way that we've already shared and discussed that topics aren't given to the speakers, the choirs are not given those topics. And so it's always beautiful to me to see how the music fills in to the whole outpouring of the spirit, but also how the music adds to or teaches specific principles or like amens a talk that's been given already. And so for me, some of the most beautiful, healing, consecrated time of conference is the music. It's the music for sure. Don't skip over that. So number three, music matters. Finally, number four, the themes and words that I used for the year this year happen to be celebrate and peace. It may be for you taking notes doesn't work. Maybe for you asking questions and trying to seek for answers isn't working. Maybe for you sitting and listening to all the talks for two days straight isn't working. But maybe for you, it's more effective to consider words or themes that you want to uh seek more understanding around, or maybe there's certain themes or words that you've chosen like I have for the year, and you just try to look for and listen for those specific words. This is a great suggestion, especially if you have kids, have them each choose a word, one word. I know there's the conference bingos and those are great. When my kids were little, we used them, but maybe you have teenagers that aren't into the conference bingo, bingo anymore, and they just like um, the snacks and they are on their phones and they're half asleep, or maybe you're the teenager listening to this uh, fireside right now and you're in that category and you don't really feel like you've had some great experiences with conference in the past, maybe identify themes or words that you want or need more of and then seek those. Listen for them and maybe even record them when you feel that they're brought to mind and taking notes around them. I do think signals to God that you want to receive and recall that information. Um, I know some friends of mine are artists and the way they um, incorporate the messages of conferences, they draw while they're listening to conference. And some of them have drawn me when I'm speaking at events. And so afterwards as a speaker, they'll come up and they have created this beautiful artwork of the message that I gave and what I've said and the themes that I've shared. So maybe expand your interpretation of how you're going to integrate the information. I want to close with just um, a quote from um, Elder Hales, but a specific story about from Sister Craig. Elder Hales said, in conference, we can receive the word of the Lord meant just for us. This is possible because the Holy Ghost carries the word of the Lord unto our hearts in terms we can understand. It's that one room schoolhouse. We come at all levels and God is happy with whatever level we're at. He's not mad that the kindergartner is not at the level of an eighth grader yet. He takes us where we're at. When I take notes at conference, I do not always write down exactly what the speaker is saying. This is what I was referencing earlier. I note the personalized direction the spirit is giving me. What is said is not as important as what we hear and what we feel. So when we think about the themes or the words, what are the feelings you want to have? Maybe prepare this week by asking the Lord to help you feel more of love, more of peace, more strength, more inspiration, more joy, more whatever. And then Elder Hills goes on to say, um, that is why we make an effort to experience conference in a setting where we, where the still small voice of the spirit can be clearly heard, felt, and understood. Oh, how we need general conference through conferences. Our faith is fortified and our testimonies deepen. And when we are converted, we strengthen each other to stand strong amid the fiery darts of these last days. I would just say, if you're a mom of young children, it may not feel like still or silent. 
I know that for me, I'm in a different phase of life and conference looks very different than it did for many years. Um, it was more of a marathon to keep everyone kind of wrangled instead of a revelatory experience for those two days. And I was grateful I could restudy, relearn and re-listen um, in the six months following conferences Andy mentioned. But I hope that you will find that one story, that one song, um, maybe for like me, a confirmation of what you've already done. That is a confirmation that you're heading in a direction that the Lord is mindful of. And he's dispelling that message as well to his leaders. For me, one of those situations is hearing stories. And I tell stories and I love stories. And so the stories stick with me. Um, Sister Craig is is one of my favorites and she's guested on um, Real Talk in the past and I, I've gotten a chance to get to know her. But one of the stories that she has shared in the past that stays with me all the time is, well, there's actually two, but I'm, I'm wrestling with the spirit because I feel like I just want to share one with you. One story in particular is the story she shared of the woman who was recently divorced and had to go to church for the first time and wondered if all of her stewardships and all the efforts and all the offerings that she had made had made a difference because her family and her life didn't look the way she thought. And if you recall the story from conference, it was one of those most tender, powerful talks I heard that conference. And to this day, I still reflect on it all the time, especially on Sundays when I'm attending church. She said that this friend came to church just disheartened and she didn't even want to be there. And a young woman noticed her and came and said hello to her and smiled at her and talked with her and sat with her and welcomed her. And that young woman sought her out every Sunday and became this bond and this friendship and this connection that uh, sustained her through a really difficult time. I think of that story often especially when we go to church or we're in stores or we're doing things and we sometimes are caught in our own pain. I love that this story illustrated the power of what a teenage girl could do to comfort the heart of a, a recently divorced uh, mother that was struggling. I love that Sister Craig and so many other speakers do such a great job of showing the why and the how of the gospel, not just the what. And I love that this story illustrates the why of the gospel for me. I hope that this conference for you is revelatory, comforting, strengthening. I hope that if you're feeling wonky, you just realize your jar is emptying just a little bit so you have room to receive. I hope the music um, does magic to your soul this conference weekend and that over the next six months you continue to find those gems that maybe you had missed so manage those expectations if you get triggered and you might because you don't agree with a message or the way the speaker delivers it it's okay to set that aside and and choose to revisit it if you want to triggers or teachers and i hope that you feel the strengthening faith and testimony building experience um of conference the way I have and the way I haven't at times. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Gaina Len, thank you so much. And as uh, just from my experience in the choir and everything, it's, it's so true that it's very, very rare when we get a request from a member of the, the first presidency or the quorum of the 12 for a specific song. Most of the time it's prepared by the music directors and uh, they everything is is approved by the first presidency but it's not they don't know what talks are coming or anything and it's so interesting how often there's uh, you know right before the choir sings a song that the talk right before right after it is related just to that and and uh, and it's just it's interesting to see from that that perspective uh, things as well. So, wait a minute. So Are you currently singing in the choir? Yeah. Mark. <laughs> I thought I was your sister in the gospel. This is important information. Maybe we need to start reading your bio when we take these fire sides. I, th I thought I thought you said that you watched the musical numbers. I'm just kidding. I do, but <laughs> listen, I'm going to tell you that most of my friends are on the female side. I have a few on the guy side, but um, 
how long have you been singing with the choir? Look at me putting you on the spot. I can tell you're a little <laughs> squirmy. See how it feels to be the one? I know, I know. No, it's... <laughs> It's uh, it's it's been super fun. I've been in for a little over six years, so six and a half years or so. Wait, so, what? I I have a, a a love for you know preparing for general conference and the music yeah. and everything. It's just a, yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Well, so. now now I have a new motivation for watching conference. I'm going to be looking for there you. There you go. And I'm there texting you, you. dude. <laughs> you can't have your phones out there though, right? No, no, we're not supposed to. Oh, wait, you're not supposed to. <laughs> well, that's what Apple watches are for. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just okay. kidding. Just so kidding. So if I start texting you and you look down, <laughs> can you do this? You're giving you're signal? giving away all the secrets, Kayla. You know, you're giving away all the secrets. <laughs> No, oh, but man, this that's is happiness. I'm sad. I feel like I just got lowered on the friend pegs, like three peg. Lowered. No, 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 no. Well, I, I feel bad that you haven't noticed because, like, he's up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Andy knew. Come on. <laughs> no, no, but I'm really glad that you talked about music too. Um, because like music really is the best. You look at how much time they set aside for the music and for the messages for that. That's I know one of my favorite spiritual experiences as a teenager. I had skipped my track meet. I was like in ninth grade. I should have gone on a track meet on a Saturday morning, but I was like, not today. It's conference day. That was the excuse I made. But I fell asleep on the couch and I woke up and the tabernacle choir was singing, now let us rejoice. And I don't know why, but as a ninth grader, now let us rejoice that day. That song's not about missions, but I was all of a sudden, the church is so true. The Lord wants me to go on a mission. I remember to this day that yeah, feeling I had while the choir sang, now let us rejoice. And I was like, I'm going on a mission. And uh, yeah, the, the the music is there for a reason. And it's one of the great opportunities for the spirit to speak to us. So thank you, Mark, for be, being a participant in that. And I yes. Was, my pleasure. My pleasure. And, and for offering that. forgiveness to your friends that don't know this about yeah. you. <laughs> well, well, to... To be to be fair, Ganelin, I am tall, and so I get put up in areas where I don't show up on TV very often. So, <laughs> did they let you have your long hair? Did you have your long hair? Uh, no, I had to cut it before I went back. So okay, okay, yeah. Yep. I uh, was that a COVID grow out? Oh, totally. Yeah, that was a COVID <laughs> grow out. Yeah, I I was uh, I I almost got like a, I almost got a really nice wig so that I could keep the long hair and still go back and do choir and everything. But then that was too expensive. I didn't want to pay that much. So for a good wig, but well, no. you know, that's my son recently went left living in Hawaii and moved back to Utah to go to BYU and his hair was longer than mine. And as his mother, I'm, I'm, I'm going to confess, I was trying to connive with him on like, how can we make it? And he's like, mom, I have to cut my hair. And I'm like, <laughs> no. See, and most people wanted me to cut mine. So no, <laughs> no, I'm a super, I mean, I was always like, uh, my kid's hair is just, is naturally curly. And both my husband and I have not now, this is like curled. I have straight hair. And so my kids always joke, they both have naturally curly hair. Their parents don't. So they want to know what happened there. And my daughter said the other day, mom, it's just all the perming you did in the eighties that it got somehow in your bloodstream <laughs> it went into and your, your DNA. children came out with naturally curly hair. Oh, so. that's too funny. Well, th well, thank you both so much for the message that, messages that you both have shared for how to, how to prepare and how to get as much as we can out of the general conference experience. This has been so uplifting. And I hope that all of you who are watching at home have felt uh, felt inspired or, or received answers to your prayers on how you can personally prepare to experience all that you can out of this upcoming general conference weekend. And so with that, we'll have a closing prayer and we'll see you in two weeks for another digital fireside. So Andy, you want to uh, offer that prayer for us? Sure. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we're so very grateful for this day, and we're so very grateful for the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, that we have living prophets on the earth today, and for all the general leaders of the church who helped to lead and guide us. We're grateful for the opportunity that we'll have to, to hear thy voice through them, and we pray thy spirit will be with us, that we will, each of us, find the right applications for ourselves to be able to listen by the spirit so we can have a good experience to manage our expectations and find the ways that thou will speak to us so that we will be able to have the experiences that we need to have to continue to improve our discipleship 
and our following of thy son, Jesus Christ. And these things we ask in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen.